and welcome to Coffee Table Physics. I'm Ryan. And I'm John. Now, we know what you're going to say. Last time we said we'd... See you next week. And that was five weeks ago. But unfortunately, we've been on a bit of an adventure. John's Christmas got off to an interesting start when he contracted bird flu after plucking his turkey. And Riley's holiday took an unusual turn when he was captured by Somali pirates off the Horn of Africa. Anyway, no need to worry, because we're back now, safe and sound, ready for some more coffee table physics. So, the reason you're probably watching us right now is because you wondered, like us, how do magic cooking boxes, more commonly known as microwaves, actually work? Now, interestingly enough, the thing that makes a microwave oven work is, well microwaves. You may remember from a previous video that microwaves are part of the electromagnetic spectrum alongside visible light. The microwaves that we're interested in have wavelengths of around 12 centimetres. A question you might reasonably ask is where do these microwaves come from? The microwaves used in your microwaves are produced in a cavity magnetron, which sounds a bit like some sort of a robot from a sci-fi film, but I digress. Oh it consists mainly of a negatively charged metal rod, or cathode, surrounded by a positively charged ring of metal, or anode. Note that the anode has lots of holes, or cavities, cut out of it. A powerful magnet is also placed underneath to generate a magnetic field pointing along the length of the tube out of the screen in this diagram. So, when you switch on your microwave, the anode heats up and boils off electrons, which are attracted to the ring. But, because of the magnetic field, the electrons don't shoot off in a straight line, but travel round in a circular path between the anode and cathode. As they do this, they obviously pass the cavities and emit microwaves. But how? It's a bit like blowing into a flute. You pass air into what is effectively a long tube where the air can then vibrate, which produces sound waves in a process known as resonance. The frequency of the sound basically depends on the length of the tube, which you change by pressing down keys. Much of the same process occurs here, only electromagnetic, or light waves, are produced rather than sound. A funnel light device known as a waveguide collects up all the emitted microwaves and channels them into the food compartment, or box. The walls of the box are reflective and act like mirrors, so the microwaves just bounce around inside the compartment. The microwaves are able to penetrate a few centimetres into the food, where they are absorbed by molecules of water and fat. This gives the molecules energy, and so they vibrate. The faster the molecules vibrate, the hotter the food. But hang on. Microwaves only penetrate a few centimetres into the food, so how does the rest of my ready meal get cooked? This is handled by the wonder that is convection. As the outer layers of the food heat up and vibrate, they give the surrounding molecules a bit of a nudge, and so now they too are vibrating. They pass on their vibrational energy onto their neighbours, who pass their energy onto their neighbours, and... You get the idea. By this method, eventually all the food molecules are vibrating and have sufficient thermal or heat energy that you deem it warm enough to eat. And so we reach the end. Now next time you're warming up your Chinese meal for one, you'll know the magic that makes it mm, so damn good to eat. Thanks for joining us. If you have any thoughts on the video, feel free to leave them in the comments box. Plus, tell us if there's something about this wonderful world around us that you think I want to know what's going on here. We would love to help. See you here next week. Same time, same place. Cheerio. Cheerio.